Hi everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you what a clogged printer head looks like and how to fix that. Be sure to check out both of my videos. I have a playlist on my YouTube of Sublimation. Uh, so I just released two other videos on how to set up this Epson Workforce WF7710 printer and uh, how to set it up and convert it into sublimation. Setting up this sublimation printer for me, I had a lot of hiccups, but thankfully I was able to overcome them and now my printer set up for sublimation. So what happened was um, I converted my printer into a sublimation printer. Again, I do have that video on my YouTube. Check that out if you need to know how to convert your printer to sublimation. And then my printer heads were clogged. So the way that I knew that my printer heads were clogged is I have these uh, test photos, which they're purge photos or CMYK photos. You can easily Google them, blow them up, and then uh, have your printer test print them. So you have all the colors in your inks and you notice my magenta, there's lines in them. So if you ever are printing your uh, sublimation, and I'm not sure if this works for, I, I don't think it works for regular ink, but I know it works for sublimation. But if there are ever lines in your prints, whether this purge print or any print, then you have a clogged print head. And the way that you clear it with sublimation is the way I'm going to show you here soon. So what you would do if you're just printing out a regular photo, let's say a family photo and you're noticing lines, your first step would go to uh, Google and print out the CMYK purge image, save that image, blow it up and then print it to full page. So you just have your four colors. That way, whenever you print out, you'll see which color is lacking or which color is clogged. So if I had the blue and the magenta, I would do this for the blue and the magenta. So I only had to do it for the magenta because all of my other colors were coming out perfectly fine and the heads were not clogged. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to just unclog this so you can get a nice clean uh, printout. You will be working with your ink. So if you do wanna grab some gloves and put them on, so be it. And you will also need some paper towels for this. For your first step is you're going to open up your lid so you can take out your cartridges. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to maintenance and you're going to click ink cartridges replacement. This way it allows you to open up your lid without giving a, you a warning sign. So I'm gonna open up my printer lid. After you open your lid, the inks are gonna go back and forth. Allow the printer to go back and forth and let it rest right here. So you have this lid above your inks. You wanna take that lid off. You do not have to break it. It has little hinges. See, there's a black spot here. All you do is bend that out and then push the inside in, just like so. So you need to remove this, and honestly, you can keep this off of your printer the whole time. I just always put it back on so I don't lose it. And then you're going to see your inks uh, right here without the lid. Since your computer is in the mode to replace the inks, the box, or I guess the cage, the holder that holds all the inks, can easily be moved back and forth. So you don't wanna you know, move it too quickly. You don't wanna break it. There's gonna be some resistance whenever you first pull it, but it's able to be moved back and forth. What you're going to do is you're going to take a paper towel and you could take one or two. I'm using the smaller cut ones and not the big cut ones. And I'm going to fold it in half like a hot dog. So I'm folding it in half like this. And the reason why I'm folding it like a hot dog is because I wanna place it inside of the printer right here underneath the cage or the holder where all the inks are. And sometimes I do fold one and half and then I fold another and half and then I put two um, underneath here. I'm going to place my paper towel down inside of the printer like so. So you see how that fits just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I place it in the printer like so. And then I'm going to move my inks over the paper towel. This is the best angle I can um, show y'all. So I'm pressing down on the paper towel and I'm moving the ink cartridge over the paper towel, just like so. And if it curls up a little bit, that's okay. And then you should see the paper towel come out this end. So what's happening is what I assume uh, is there's a lot of air in the lines. So a lot of air <clears throat> is stuck inside of um, these cartridges and so whenever it goes through the lines and prints out it's a lot of uh, mist ink so that's why you see the magenta how it goes how it looks is it's uh, 
those blank spots are air or so that's air is what I believe is happening. So what I do is I take my sublimation kit, uh, what they give me, they give me syringes. So I have each syringe is a different color. So since I am working with magenta, I'm only going to use my magenta. I removed my uh, needle from the top and then there's little air holes here. So if you remember in my previous videos, these air holes should be uh, open. So it, one, if your air holes aren't open and you left those on, take those off because that is causing a problem as well. So I'm just going to open my syringe all the way and I'm going to place that syringe like so into that air hole. And what I wanna do is I wanna push through any air that might be in there and push it all the way through. So it's gonna bleed on this paper towel and it's gonna bleed so much uh, that you're gonna think that you just ran through a lot of ink. So don't be scared that it bleeds a lot. Now what I recommend is to have more paper towels on hand. So I folded like three or four, whenever I had a lot of uh, air inside of my, I guess my lines or my cartridges, I folded like 10. And if you're gonna bleed a lot, then maybe double up and put like two underneath here. Just have them pre-folded so you can easily take it out and then put it back in. So once you have your syringe like so, you're just going to press on it very lightly, depending on how much air you have in your lines. So when I had the blue, the cyan uh, get lines in it, I had to push it down, push it down very gently. I did the printout again and the blue worked perfectly. The magenta, for some reason, I had to push most of that ink out and then it finally worked. It didn't work out until after three or four tries. So I'm just going to push down lightly for my sake. My print head is not clogged, so I'm just gonna uh, push down lightly just to show y'all what it's gonna look like. And you should feel some resistance. So whenever you push down on that syringe, you should feel a little bit of resistance and that syringe should pop right back up. So again, I just pushed down lightly so only a little bit of ink came out because my ink cartridges is not um, clogged. I don't wanna mess anything up and re-clog it or add air to it. So you're going to see that ink come out and you see it comes out for a while. So I have one puddle and two puddles. So I just move it and I just let it continue to run out. I'll show you another before I fixed it. This is how much ink came out before. So you can see a lot of the ink came out because my magenta was being so stubborn. So I had to waste all of this ink to remove any air inside of my cartridges or inside of my lines. And like I mentioned before, it didn't work until three or four printouts. So this is another wasted ink, which in reality, it's not that much because I have so much from my uh, sublimation kit. So just, you have to keep doing it until the air is completely out. So if you're having trouble with all of the colors, you see there's three dots on there. Make sure you, uh, make sure you flush them all out or kind of push them all out and use each syringe with each color. So again, I use my magenta, so the cyan, the yellow, the black, make sure you use each color. So what I do is I move the ink back and I check this little, um, I guess the foam area and I blot it uh, because a lot of it did over uh, overflow or leak through the paper towel. And so I just like to blot it just to clean it up. I think this area is meant to get ink on it. So don't freak out if a big puddle like splashes on here or it goes through. It didn't ruin my printer. Once you're done with your syringes and you push all of the ink through, this process took me um, a little bit, I would say about 10 minutes to, to flush all the ink through. So it doesn't take that long, but it's just very like tedious. Uh, whenever I push the syringe for the magenta especially, I heard air bubbles. So I kept pushing until I didn't hear the air bubble or the bubbling sound. This, the cyan worked really well. It had just a little bit of air in there. So I pushed a little bit. And like I told y'all before, it worked uh, fantastically. The magenta just gave me a, a bunch of, just, just a bunch of hassle. So now you're going to place your lid back on your inks like that. And then you're going to close your lid and you're going to hear your printer do a lot of fun little noises. So just let it uh, do its thing. And then I'll return with that. Whenever your printer's finished doing its thing, it's going to show this screen that says replacement is complete. So you're going to click okay. And after you're finished with that, you're going to do a print head cleaning. So it should be right back in the maintenance. I know y'all can't really see this, but it's a second one down from maintenance, print head cleaning. That's gonna take about five to 10 minutes. So let it clean. 
and then we'll return. Once the cleaning is complete, you're going to see the confirmation. It states print head cleaning complete. Printing and nozzle check is recommended. Print the pattern. So uh, go ahead and click yes and see how it looks. If it looks a little wonky, um, like so, let me show you. I'm sorry, this is a good one. So if it looks similar to this, this is what you want to see. There's a couple, like the black is <clears throat> a little off and then you see that there's a square missing or a rectangle missing. There's other ones that did not do so well for me in the earlier stages, which look similar to this. So if it looks like this, then what you're going to have to do most likely is to repeat this process again, do the cleaning again, and then uh, try to do uh, the test again. But what I did honestly was I just did one and if it turned out like this, or if it turned out like this, I still did my purge paper. So I still did this. I honestly think doing this is a lot better than doing the head cleaning. Um, I'm sorry, the nozzle check. So what I did was I clicked no, but you can click yes. And I just went through and I just put in my purge page. So once I print in my purge page, if it looked like this, that's when I went ahead and I did another manual cleaning with the paper towels and the syringes. And I really took my time with that. Again, if you hear those air bubbles in that ink cartridges, there's still air in there. So just keep pushing. You might go through a lot of ink like I did, but it's worth it because there's no point of having a printout whenever there's an ink that just won't work. And there's a lot of ink that I have left over. So yes, I wasted some, but sometimes you just have to do this because you're putting new ink in here. So eventually, once you're finished with this, like myself, you should have a nice, pretty clean purge page. Your purge page should look like so. This took me a long time to get only because I had no idea where the issue came from. This is why I'm making this video. So sometimes this doesn't happen. I just got, I guess, unlucky, but honestly, it just allowed me to learn a lot about this printer and actually allowed me to understand. So this is where I started with my purge page. It didn't even print out the magenta. And then it started printing more and more. This is after I started uh, doing the syringe and the what I call a manual cleaning. And then I did it two more times and it still looked like this. And then eventually I got this clean, nice page. I am so proud of this page because it took me a long time to get here. So I hope yours is similar to this. It should look just like this. And if you notice my uh, sublimation ink looks dingy, that's how you want it to look. So do not freak out if this does not look really crisp or if it doesn't look very vibrant or vi bright. Um, sublimation, it reacts and it pops with heat. So there's no heat on this paper. So it's going to look a little off. So this concludes my video. I hope this was helpful. Again, I know this is just a how-to video to set up your printer, but unfortunately you have to go through all of this stuff to get to the fun stuff. So if this video did help you, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. I'll see y'all next time.